Hello everyone. Today I'd like to answer a question that I get asked all the time. How does the foam machine make foam? Well, do you remember when you were a kid and your parents brought you a little bottle with bubbles? You'd pull out this little wand, coat it in soapy water, and you'd blow in it and it would push a bubble off the end. Well, the foam machine pretty much works exactly the same way. So today I'm gonna to show you how to build a foam wand. And pretty much the way it works is that you have a single line coming into it. And in this line is a mixture of soapy water and air. The soapy water coats stainless steel wool. Then the air pushes bubbles through these little tiny openings in the stainless steel wool. Except instead of having a single bubble wand, you have tens of thousands of bubble wands that makes tens of thousands of bubbles. And instead of a large wand, each bubble is very small. So I hope you enjoy it. Here's a clip from a video course we'll be releasing soon called An Introduction to Aircrete, where it shows you each and every step of the process from manufacturing your equipment all the way through to every technique and every process required to build your own Aircrete dome home. So look for the product soon. I'll pop a link in the description below just as soon as it's available. Otherwise, click the link below in our description and sign up for our email list to be notified when this product is available. Y'all have a great day. All right, now to make the foam wand. Measure off a 12 inch piece of inch and a quarter PVC and cut it off. Cut it as straight and flush as possible. Remove the burrs from inside the PVC pipe if you used a saw. Now, notice the depth that the PVC fits into the pipe. We're going to drill holes, and we want to be certain that when we slip the PVC pipe on, the holes will be covered by the cap. Starting very near the bottom of the pipe, drill your first hole through the first side and directly through the opposite side. insert or measure and cut a piece of metal, preferably stainless steel, that fits inside of the pipe. You can also use a screw or a rivet. The most important thing is that it, the material fits inside the pipe and does not protrude beyond the edge of the pipe any whatsoever. Otherwise, it will prevent the cap from fitting onto the pipe and preventing a proper seal. So again, make sure it's smooth with no hang-ups on both sides. Drill a second hole just slightly higher, allowing room for the next piece of metal to fit behind the first The metal is perpendicular or 90 degrees to the first piece of metal. Insert your two metal retainer rods, bars, or screws. The purpose of these is to retain the stainless steel wool pads, allowing pressure to be applied from behind without the pad slipping down. Now, before proceeding, we're going to need to drill and tap threads into both of the PVC end caps. Use pliers or a vice grip to hold the PVC cap to allow you to drill a hole without it slipping. If you hold it in your hand, it's possible the drill bit could go into and through your hand when it grabs suddenly. So, use pliers or a vice grip. Drill both caps 
as near as possible to the center in both caps. Now, using your tap and a half inch drill adapter or the hand tap tool, tap or thread in both caps. And this thread is a quarter inch NPT or normal pipe thread. With the caps now ready, apply glue while holding the retainer rods in place and carefully apply the cap. The cap will slip over the holes holding the rods in and sealing it at the same time. Mark with this end. Don't cut through, but make a permanent mark on this end of your foam wand. It's important that as the foam and air pressure comes through, it hold the, the pads that you are going to insert don't slip through because otherwise the pads will actually slip down into the cap and plug the hole, reducing or completely stopping your foam flow. We're going to use stainless steel wool pads, the fine grade, the finer the better, but only the fine grade stainless steel wool. And it has to be stainless steel wool because standard steel wools will rust and go away and they can break down in as little as a day. So fold your stainless steel wool pads and stuff them into the pipe one at a time. It's important that they fit fairly tightly. Fill it all the way to the very end with stainless steel. In this case, we only need a thigh full. Apply glue and cap to that end. Now, this is your quarter inch NPT to 3 8 slip pipe tubing adapter. These have Teflon tape already applied to the threads. All you have to do is insert them and tighten them down firmly. Finding the end that you put your mark on, this is the output end of the wand. Be sure to mark this end of the pipe clearly so that you know that it's the output. Because chances are as you work with these, you may pull them off the tubing and you do not want to reverse the tube later because if you hook the input up to the output, it will actually push your pads down to the other end and block the flow of foam. And there you have it, the foam wand. So now, taking the output of your foam machine, plug this into the input end of your foam wand. And there you have it. You have a foam machine. It can quickly make thick, frothy foam, almost like shaving cream. It makes a nice, thick, lathery foam and you see that it shoots a long ways. The output should be fairly rapid and steady. In agriculture this foam is actually used to spray on agricultural crops having mixed pesticides or other materials into the foam.